33 minutes run past the hour, seven time check here from the studios clock. Time to bring you the history segment of the program. Time to tell you the story of Thomas Fuller. One exceptional black man. One exceptional black American. Born in Guinea. I mean, born somewhere around Benin. Somewhere between Liberia and Benin. In the 17th century, the man who later grew up to become a very important figure in life, important figure in world history. Today, you can't talk about mathematicians of the world and not talk about Thomas Fuller, who is an African, who had no formal education but had exceptional IQ. Today, we put a feature upon him, put an honor upon him, put some respect upon his name, Thomas Fuller. This is the history. All right, straight away, let's jump into the story basket and tell the story of a great man. A great man born African, but some way somehow landed in the hands of America, landed in the land of America, Virginia. He was originally born, you know, you know they change the names. They change the names. So not originally born Thomas Fuller. Not originally born Thomas Fuller. But the Fuller obviously sounds African. But the Thomas we all know. That is not African. But you know, history and the story says he was Thomas Fuller. Thomas Fuller. Born sometime in the 1710. 1710. Died on December 1790. Died on December 1790. He was also known as Negroton, Negroton, or the Virginia Calculator, the Virginia Calculator. He was an enslaved African renowned for his mathematical abilities. renowned he was known for his mathematical abilities he made history with his mathematical ab- exceptional mathematical abilities born in africa somewhere between present day liberia and benin he was originally born in africa somewhere between present day liberia and benin fuller was enslaved and shipped to america in 1724 at the age of 14 Only at 14, at the age of 14, he was captured, enslaved, and shipped all the way into America in 1924, eventually becoming the legal property of Presley and Elizabeth Cox of Alexandria, Virginia. Both Fuller and the Coxes were illiterate. Both Fuller and the Coxes, his masters, were illiterate. None of them had formal education. The slave had no formal education. The master had no formal education. They were all illiterate. The Coxes enslaved 16 people. They enslaved 16 people and appeared to value Fuller the most. They valued Fuller more than all the 16, all the 15. And it was very, very usual. It was very usual of slave masters. They had favorites among the slaves. And I know, let me not liken this to Anima really. Let me know, even though the way and manner they treated the slaves were just like treating, you know, rearing animals. But, you know, for the sake of humanity and for, for the sake of empathy, let me not liken it to that. But even if you have your kit, four, three, five, six, you have a favorite, you have a favorite. So yes, out of the 16, out of the 16, he was the favorite among the 16 slaves the Coxes have. The Coxes had 16 people, they enslaved 16 people and appeared to value Fuller the most. They valued him more than the rest. He expressed gratitude for not being sold. He showed a lot of gratitude to his master, towards his masters for not selling him out. He was at least comfortable with them than being sold out to another slave master whom he doesn't know how he, you know, he, he doesn't know how he'll be treated. So he showed gratitude, enough gratitude for not being sold by the Coxes. Stories of his abilities abounded through 
the eastern seaboard stories of his abilities will soon travel all across the borders will soon travel all across america and get people attracted wanting to know more about him about thomas fuller his skill was even used as proof that enslaved blacks were equal to whites in intelligence which fueled some pro-abolitionists to discuss and want to abolish slavery this particular man i'm talking about the thomas fuller he was even used at a particular point as proof that enslaved blacks were equal to whites when it comes to intelligence which actually fueled influenced some pro-abolitionist discussion so when they were discussing about how to get blacks out of slavery and treat them same as human beings like human the human they are they used the ability of this man to prove that yes they might be black they might be enslaved but they're just as intelligent as you are as far as intelligence is concerned so the pro-abolitionists used him to actually push their agenda to get all slaves you know released i mean freed and abolish slavery when fuller was about 70 years when he was about 70 years old one william william and samuel coates of pennsylvania were in alexandria and having heard of fuller's powers sent for him they asked to meet fuller they asked him two questions which satisfied their curiosity they asked him two questions expecting to humiliate the man expecting to prove that yo man no black man could have been very intelligent like that let's put him to test make we humiliate him so they heard about him and then went on an expedition to go look for him they went looking for him when they went there they asked for him they wanted to meet him when they met him they said you we have heard about you we have heard you have so much mathematical abilities all right let's see about that they put across two questions to him just to satisfy their curiosity first they asked him how many seconds were there how many seconds they were in a year and a half not a year they did not sign it up they did not actually sign it up like that make it easier so they told him yeah you know we have a year divide the year into two how many seconds do we have in a year and a half in a year and a half he has he answered each question in 10 in about two minutes he answered each question in 10 in about two minutes they were shocked they said yo man yeah really really there was someone sitting down there confirming you know with the pen and paper actually putting the figures together putting the the numbers together to calculate manually but when they asked fuller he had no formal education he could not even hold the pen not to talk of right so yes he stood there closed his eyes stared at the stars i mean the sky and then said you know in two minutes he gave them the answer some over 47 seconds some over 47 47,304 seconds he told them yo man in two seconds in two minutes he told them it's 47,304 seconds they asked him the second question one curiosity said they asked him a second question when they asked him how many seconds a man has lived who is 70 years 17 days and 12 hours old look at the breakdown a very complex question even if you need a calculator to do this it is still complex how much more do it off head they asked him they were set out there to humiliate him you, you know the questions they were asking were no ordinary questions they were asking the question that will humiliate him and then rubbish the fact that the man is mathematically intelligent so the first question was about seconds the amount of the number of seconds we have in a year and a half he gave them the answer in two minutes they asked him the second one how many seconds a man has lived who is 70 years 17 days and 12 hours old he answered in a minute and a half even as complex as that question was he answered in a minute and a half not even two minutes in a minute and a half one of the men who was working out the problems on paper you know um, informed fuller that his answer was too high he said no the first one you're right but this one no 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 your answer is too high 
That means your answer is incorrect. Abroso. Fuller smiled and hastily replied him, Top, Massa, you forget the leap year. You know we have a leap year. So he calculated the leap years. He made sure he put together the leap years. He put the leap years into consideration, making his, non- his answer accurate. But the white man forgot about the leap years and then calculated all the months the same and then got it wrong. Got a higher answer than that of Fuller, whose answer is the accurate one. He reminded the white man of the leap years. I mean the leap year. When the leap year was added in, the Psalms matched up with Fuller's answer. Despite Fuller's perfect answers, it appeared to the two men, the quotes, that his mental abilities must have once been greater. Then they wrote this about him, and I take you through what they wrote about him. He said, he was a gray-headed man. Fuller was a gray-headed man and exhibited several other marks of weaknesses. Weakness of old age. He had worked hard upon the farm during the whole of his life, but had never been inter- but has never been interpret intemperate in the use of spiritus liquors. He spoke with great respect for his mistress and mentioned in particular manner his obligations to her for refusing to sell him, which she had been tempted to by offers of large sums of money for several for several persons. Many were those who went there to tempt the woman to sell off Fuller to them because of the man's abilities, his mathematical abilities. He was a walking calculator, even though we had no calculator at that time. He might have even inspired the production, inspired the invention of calculator. If a human could calculate such complex mathematical questions of her, then we need a calculator to aid those who can do that. So yes, his mistress was tempted. They were tempted. They were. He, she was tempted to sell him off. Many came with great offers. Even those who came there to test him to satisfy their curiosity when they were about leaving, they said we want to buy him off. How much? The woman said we are not selling. They gave a very ridiculous price to tempt her. A very very ex- very very high price. Great offer to tempt her to sell him off. Yes, so the mistress said, no, I do not know how you treat him when you take him there, so I am not selling him. And Fuller appreciated that gesture so much so that even in his old age, over 70 years, he still appreciated the fact that his mistress never sold him off because of money. One person of the gentleman for, I mean, one, one person for the gentleman of the gentleman, Mr. Coates, having remarked in his presence that it was a pity he had no uh, formal education, not an education equal to his genius. He said, I mean, Fuller replied him, no, master. It is best I had no learning, for many learned men are great fools. When the white man expressed pity, of the fact that no, even his, even with his great abilities, he had no formal education. He had no formal education to equal his genius. Fuller said, no, don't pity me. It is not a matter of pity. I am grateful I had no formal education. Because many are learned. But yes, the great fools. He appreciated every situation he found himself. And never pitied himself a bit. He is, till date, in history, one of the greatest mathematicians to ever live on earth. He was a black man, but sadly a black slave. Who did we honor? We honored Thomas Fuller, the black slave who is also a legend. This is from Chronics to His Memories.